Yes! JD in the duffel bag, myself, Chucky online. Bro, do you know what? I don't really like doing the big intros and yeah. all of that type of stuff. Do you know what I mean? I got Anthony Joshua with me. Well, we did it. We did it. Yeah, we did it like that. <laughs> Bro, I can't complain, man. That's I got I got two arms, two legs. I got to give thanks. How are you, man? That's the same mindset, bro. Mm, do you know what I mean? Mm, it's going to be a lot worse, but we're here. Yeah. You know, when I walked in and I saw you, I was, I was shocked because I'm a listener of your show. Sick. I'm a supporter of your show as well. Love that. It just makes the conversation easier when you're familiar with the person across the table. Definitely. You know and I mean? I've, I've always said as well, like, even before, it's always felt like, even I know you, yeah, it's yeah. always, to a lot of us, we do feel like yeah. you're like yeah, family yeah, yeah, member yeah. as well. Yeah, do you get yeah, what I'm saying? 100%. But firstly, I want to, just your YouTube channel, bro. Okay. I, I do want to say that, like, I love your YouTube channel, bro. Serious? And you know what it reminds me of? Come on. An element of it reminds me of, you know, Eric Thompson? Yeah, yeah. You know, like the the, the motivational yeah, speaker yeah, yeah. or whatever. All you need is a little bit of music in the background. Yeah, 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 and man yeah, would just yeah, be yeah. gassed, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it just gives it a bit more authenticity. Yeah, and yeah, if yeah. No one's listened to one of his mixtapes. Listen to The Heart of Detroit by yeah. Eric Thomas. Everything you said with the music. Yeah. He he was the first one to capture that scene where you put a little bit of the music in it. And of course. And a little bit of talking and it just kind of gets you pumped up. It proper helps, bro. Like, I, I don't know about you, but... See, like when I'm training, yeah. that's the type of stuff I'm listening to a lot yeah. now. I've had mixtapes and certain albums that have ultimately got me wham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, get yeah, me? Yeah, I've yeah. Like listened to like a Jay Spade's mixtape or yeah. whatever it may be, yeah, or a Blade Brown. Yeah, and yeah. then after six months, I'm just blank. Yeah, yeah. But then like there becomes a time where I, I need something a little bit different, something 100%. that sort of taps into taps a different... Taps into the mind. Yeah, yeah, 100%. yeah. 100%. And... Um, that Heart of, the, Heart of Detroit mixtape is really good. I think you'll like that. Is it, yeah? Yeah, I think you'll like that one, definitely. What are you listening to, like, uh, when, it it. Comes to, when it comes to training, though? Are you, is um, that the type of stuff that you're listening to as well, or not, not well, really? Well, we've got a lot of guys from America in at the minute, so there's a lot of, like, new age hip-hop. Yeah. But then we do go old school as well. I listen to a lot of, like, uh, old school, like, BG Knockout. Yeah. So like, the old school classic hip-hop. I think that, that's my favourite era. And then a bit of soul. Like the jazz era, mm. like BB King. Yeah, so yeah, I've yeah. Just been listening to one or two of his tracks recently. It's just like a bit more. It's not what you expect, but it just gets me in the zone. Yeah, it just gets me in the zone in a different way. You're a man of nostalgia, isn't it? Wow. Well, I am as well. <laughs> you know, you know. No, we one, was like, no one, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> no, but <laughs> like you're I'm just okay. like, I'm like, yeah, yeah. No, nostalgia <laughs> is like you like. Oh, like you kind of yeah. like old school things, don't yes, you? Yes, so yes, like hundred percent. Music wise, like music. Because that's where it all stems from, of course. And even when you go back to the old school, even though it is newer today, mm. you will you will find traits of things that were happening then that we that we're just like renewing today. So that's like uh, where I like the old school is because I feel like what one of my trainers says is that there's clues to success. Word. They're out there already. We just have to follow what success is wow. and we can replicate in today's market. Definitely. It's funny that you mentioned that actually because I went to a, um, I went to an exhibition, what was it, two years ago and it was called Return of the Rude Boy. My mum mm -hmm. took me there. Okay. Yeah. And you know, like sometimes, I'm not even going to lie to you. Sometimes my mum will say to me, ah, oh, like you should really come to this. I'd like you to see it or whatever. And sometimes yeah. I'm like, mum, man, I'm a big man. Yeah, Do you yeah, get what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah. like, seriously. Yeah. But we went to this thing and it was so good, bro, because it was ultimately about from the fashion sense yeah yeah and you looked at like how people used to dress okay. in like the 60s yeah 70s and yeah, stuff yeah. like that and then like you see these pictures and you're like right this is like high high-end fashion now high-end high-end fashion so it's so like it's all that like nostalgia look, it's gone round you get what i'm saying yeah. it's like a lot of things whether it's fashion music stuff like all different types of styles all go round it's yeah. weird isn't it I like I even like the name nostalgia like yeah. the name is just authentic as well yeah I like that a lot how how are you though bro like on a on a serious one like how are you how have you been how's things for me been? I'm in, I'm improving so like away from sport mm. even though I use sport as my life purpose I'm improving which is good and I feel like that gives me purpose. So it's just kind of my sports life and my personal life just marries together well. So mm. I'm just living the life of a proper athlete. Yeah. That's all it is for me, man. Do you feel like you're, like you can't, you almost can't be at peace unless you are training? Yeah, because that's where I found peace. That's when I wanted to become a man. When I was 18 and I wanted to sort myself out and I kind of looked at my life, I found sport mm. and it taught me a lot. And I feel like that's, that's the reasons why People would say, oh, listen, you should go on holiday or you should do that. And I'm like, nah, 
Like, I'm cool. Like, it's not that I find gym a chore. Like, mm. I'm someone that you need to get out of the gym. I actually love it because it helps keep my life intact and in purpose. Yeah. I love training. Mm. Sometimes I need a, a place to kind of go and find this piece of, this bit of tranquility. You yeah. went to Jamaica, I know, like, not that long ago. And that's my place for I me. I love Jamaica. If I, if yeah. I, whenever things are getting super hectic for me or yeah. whatever, and I need to reset, so to speak, yeah. for me, Jamaica is like... But then, now let's talk about people that can't afford Jamaica. All right. And that's that's the gym. Do you see what I'm saying? I hear you still. That's like, just like a gym space. Or that's what I love about boxing is, is like, I used to borrow my cousin's shorts, a pair of trainers, mm. And then the, the club would just have some boxing gloves. Mm. And I found real like peace and tranquility in there. And it was like, yeah. I just couldn't wait to go back. And it's a blessing that we can experience places like Jamaica. But it was like, the weird thing is that something so simple gave me so much joy. Yes. And that's why for me, even though boxing is like a gutter sport and it's not like a, a Formula One type of sport or mm. golfing type of sport, but I have to keep a professional mindset and really focus as a professional if I want to achieve in this game. Yeah. Yeah, man. I Do you ever to. go back, like, see, like, where you like where you grew up and that, yeah? Do you ever, like, literally just go back and just hang there occasionally? Yeah, I was there two weeks ago. Yeah. Squaddy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. man, then. I started boxing, then a year into boxing, I come up to Sheffield. Mm. So in a short space of time, my life just, I just distanced myself. Mm -hmm. Not that I wanted to, but life just took me away from everything. And then... I feel like after 10 years, honestly, I've reconnected with my whole squad again. Yeah. And um, I feel like I'm bringing something back to the hood. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Back to the boys. And we call it the hood because that's just what we called it. Of course. And I'm just bringing something back now. And I feel like I'm fighting because I want to lift up Watford and the boys from there as well. Yeah. Hopefully we can do some business together and do something positive in our community. Because where I grew up was a real real community man yeah and you know what though people have to put a little respect on Watford's name to be fair you remember bro you remember as well bro, 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 bro. I don't get me started one I know about Watford definitely but two <laughs> yeah. we used to come to Watford party regular yeah the area nightclub Destiny. destinies candy bro. yes bro <laughs> they candy. <know. laughs> this is what I'm talking about they know we used to go Yatesies in Yatesies. Italy, yeah? yeah, yeah. And the we had they used to get the bus because the bus used to take you. So you pay twelve pound from um, uh, Ealing, Ealing to Destinies. The thing is, some man will come all the way from south or east or wherever, not even knowing how they're getting back. Trust but me. they just wanted to make sure. <laughs> yeah. Watford. That's what yeah. I'm saying. So imagine we live there yeah, yeah. as well. So we're seeing all the London, different Londoners coming down. So we're connecting around the, the area and that. It was just a really good community. Mm. And then the thing is, is that like, as I said, I started getting in trouble. Yeah. I wanted to advance financially before my time. So you make silly mistakes and stuff like that. And then with that being said, I feel like I missed that 10 year period when I could have still been squaddy, mm. but I was just focusing on boxing. So I was, I was in a different fight for my life, which was in the ring. And uh, it's good because now all the squads coming out to Saudi, Got a lot of my friends from Watford who I grew up with that are coming out to Saudi as well. Yeah. And even though I took my first loss in New York, it's brought a lot of reasoning back to my life. Hopefully this will be another resurrection for me, another defining moment in my career in front of some of my pals from back in the day of as course. well. Still on the hood though, and it ends a little bit. Mm. For me, like I feel like elements of it really inspire me still. 100%. Um, going back to the ends yeah. inspires me in two different ways. Okay. Because it's like, okay, cool. This is where I come from. And like, and, and I never knew that where I grew up and what I was doing would have monetary value from what I was yeah. seeing and what I was yeah. experiencing. Yeah. But, but also, yeah. if I'm being honest, sometimes there's like a couple of people that's from my ends that I look at and I think, you inspire me because... Not in a bad way, but I just don't want to be like you. Yeah. Like, I don't want to find myself yeah, yeah, back yeah. in this situation. With all due respect. With all due respect. So then, you get what I'm saying? Would you try and help those people? Absolutely. But it's difficult as well. Because you, you, the thing is, you, you know that you can't help everyone. That's you can the try. Thing, but you can't help everyone. That's the thing. And in the hood or in certain areas, it feels like everyone needs help, man. Mm. But at the same time, I feel like that's the next stage of my boxing career, I think. Mm. like initially it's about family now I want to go into the next step of my career where I want to be able to help like my community a bit mm. more because I know how difficult it is like all of the men them are 30 and that 
And when I went back, like one of our friends passed away years ago, so we went to the grave and stuff. And it's like, nah, man, we, we're still the same boys. We're still the same kids. And we still got the same passion. And look at you when you're saying that you talk about Watford years ago. I'm like, we need to do a reunion. Of course. Of what it once was and get everyone back and we can start making it a monetary system where we can start generating income. And then the summer times around the corner where we could use Casterbury Park. I'm like, but we need to start thinking as businessmen. Um, Is it hard though? Because I know that sometimes there's people that you can love dearly that you've yeah, known yeah. for a long time. Yeah. But whatever it is, they don't have that thing. Yeah. Here That's in what I was going to ask heart. you. Is that how did you take yourself out of when you say you your experiences? You never knew you could turn it into a monetary yeah. system or, yeah. or its value. I didn't, know it, I didn't know it had monetary value. But how did you then transition? That? Like, what makes you unique? I was always into music and my dad was a DJ. Yeah. So then like, I always followed that. And luckily for me, not yeah. everyone has this as well, but luckily yeah. for me, my parents always pushed me into whatever it was that I wanted to do. As long as it was constructive, yeah. they would always push me in that, that, in that yeah, direction. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So Which it was always about- everyone has that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It was always about make like, do something constructive. Don't just yeah. be hanging around on the street and yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Find out what it is that you want to do. If you, yeah. don't wanna, if you don't wanna go college, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. If you want to do music, that's okay. But yeah. what is it that you want to do? So I was just literally the out thing. there just trying to find my feet. But yeah. luckily, even within this year, even within situations where you have people who may not necessarily have the heart or the drive or whatever it is to do, whatever it is that they want to do, yeah. there's always people still within it that, that do want to do that. That do want to do it. Exactly. So I gravitated to that. Yeah. When I'm seeing like my best mate, for example, who's a very good friend of mine, he's my, he's like my brother now. He manages a very big, uh, I might as well just plug him. He, manage, he manages Dave. Yeah, And amazing. before that well he done. was, you know, doing a lot of other different things. Yeah, he's doing big things, acting. When everything. I was watching him, yeah. like waking up early in the morning yeah. and going and doing X, Y, and Z, in yeah. my head, I'm like, rah, I actually can't even, I can't let the side down. No, you can't, you can't say you're tired or working hard when you're seeing no way. people around you. So that's why, for, for what I felt when I went back is that I have to use my sports as an influence to the community. Yeah. So the same friends that I grew up with that are still on, like whatever they're on or still around the area, I don't want to leave them there. So a lot of them are coming to Saudi. So the best thing I can do is give them an experience to leave their local environment, yeah? Get you. Yeah? So that's what boxing done for me. Thank God that I found it because number one, it took me away from Watford. Number two, it brought me to Sheffield. I would have never come here. I would have never been going Saudi mm. in my life. I would have never gone Azerbaijan, Uzbekistan, Russia, these countries to compete, but it just helped me open my eyes and ears to certain things. And that's what we need to do for the lads. Mm. Some of them, some boys don't even have their passports renewed. Do you know, I know Tim, you didn't have your passport renewed and that's one of my sparring partners. Yeah. Check him out, Tim, yeah. Mayhem, you know what I'm saying, from Kentucky. Wait, wait, <laughs> how long have you been sparring partners? 12 weeks. See? Oh, 12 weeks. So you yeah. didn't have the passport. Yeah, they're exactly. no. coming back. That's just so you know what it's like, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Cool, when, cool. when you're not traveling much and stuff like that. So that's, and Tim's come out to Sheffield now and he's seen a whole new environment mm. and that does something to you inside, whatever it does. And that's what I'm trying to do for the boys now. So through boxing, hopefully, if it's not just through the fights, if there's a premiere where we might go watch an Idris Elba film mm -hmm. and we get to shake hands with him, that might inspire one of them mm -hmm. who's into acting. Do you know what I mean? So this is what we need to start doing. And that's how the olders pass the right knowledge onto the youngers. It's key. It's key. It's key, It's bro. key. And I, I've, always, I've, yeah. I've said before, I know that some people have like really disagreed with this um, train of thought, but I, I did feel like sometimes in our environment or where we came from, there was an element of like the the olders letting some of the youngers down only because hundred percent it was it was this thing 100%. of like if my if if dad wasn't in the household and we didn't olders. have that then it was the olders when I say to you before like I, sometimes I look at some of the people that are from my ends and I think I don't want to be like you yeah it's not a yeah, disrespectful yeah. That's thing what, but yeah, it, yeah, it's on. more of a thing of like when you was young you was the guy <laughs> man was looking <laughs> no, at you like it? you was the absolute <laughs> the guy. guy but then yeah you didn't channel that into the right things and you didn't help me do well, you that you didn't even channel it into you exactly you didn't say to me you know what yeah Instead of you doing what I'm doing, yes. yeah, what is it that you're interested in? When you're looking for, what's that thing when you're in school and you've got to go and find a job, apprenticeship or something? 
work, work experience. experience. Where, where your friend that you think's the guy who's got all the connects can't even put you into a work experience yeah. placement or come and sit beside him to work. Yeah. And that's what I started learning about um, the business industry is that you need to build up your connections and so you can help not even my friends, my, my younger sister or my younger brother or my cousin. Mm. And that's when we all have to make these efforts to of change. Course. We've all come, a lot of people from years back, the 70s, the 60s have come from bad backgrounds. The world yeah. wasn't always what we see it as today. And the people in places aren't always what we see as today. They've all started off somewhere. Mm. But it doesn't matter where you start. It's what your ambition is in the long run. And that's why hopefully we can all make a positive change like all of the boys I'm around now, they're not bad people, but it's not been easy mm. for us. And we're all pushing to make a better change. And that's why the 258, like the company that, you know, is managing me, that's what it stands for, is that we have to work as if we had another hour and another day, because 24 seven ain't enough when you're trying to be in the rat race. Yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to go that one step further. And that's why we're all pushing in the yeah. same direction. It's interesting, it's just so interesting about the history and the story and bringing back and sports yeah. being in a position with boxing I'm glad I found boxing because I feel like it's a sport that's so in touch with the streets definitely my gym is just some little hall probably the size of this do you know what I mean like with a hundred kids that come in there every day and it's just so good so to is it still to busy like that yeah I like I'm it sounds weird. like a silly question yeah but yeah. like obviously like before like going in, like when there was youth clubs and all of those type of things, that? we would like go to these youth clubs or whatever, but yeah. they being shut down and that. That's what yeah, there are gyms. Them. There are gyms, but our young, our young bucks go into them. Oh, bro, you should ask Ben, like when, when you come down Finch ABC, that's what I loved about it. You meet Irish, Asian, Jewish, African, Caribbean, English, um, Muslim, Christian, Buddhist, so many different religions and races. You meet the olders in there who are working, the seniors who are working hard and fighting. So Derek was my older. He was in the gym at the time. So I wanted to aspire to be like him and stuff like that. So it was a right representation. And that's what I loved about that boxing environment. Mm. So hopefully, you know, even though boxing, we're trying to take it to the world, mm. my feet are still so close to the ground. Mm. And even though I had took 10 years away from where I grew up, I honestly feel is that it was only so I can give back. Mm. Do you know what I mean? When I went back, it's like, certain man do a 10 year bird and come back to nothing. I've done my 10 year stint in boxing and I'm bringing something back. So That's you can't it. hate on me for that. No. So we have, but it takes all of us to make a conscious effort in the community to try and make a change. Cause um, Watford, you know what of it was course, like. I'm yeah, if you, we bro. could bring it back, that positive vibe that we once had in Watford, it was just popping. <laughs> but you know, it's inspired, like on the other side of that, it is inspiring. Yeah. And I think that like, you have a connection with people that are there because you've come from there as well. Yeah, yeah, and sometimes yeah. that's just the little bit of push that people need sometimes. Exactly. If you push yourself too far away from the people. Exactly. Then. How can I achieve what I can't see? Mm. So you've heard about this guy, but you never see this guy. You have to be like on the front line with your soldiers. Do you know what I mean? So I can't just be sitting back saying, yeah, you can be like, this guy or you could be like not bigging myself up or anything but I'm saying oh you could be the next champion or like me but I'm not to be seen mm. that's why it's important to be front line with your squad and um be in Watford be in London be in Finch ABC Mamacha gym where kids can touch you and speak to you I think it's so important man and that's that's where you would find me like mm. I don't hide I'm not in those plush gym. We're in a local gym here. Yeah, this kids. is sick, by the way. Oh, yeah. There's, there's just... like, basically, where we're at, if you can't see, for those who's listening, we're in um, we're in Sheffield. Um, I'm not sure the name of this building. EIS. But EIS, yeah. yeah. And then there's like a track in there. We yeah. was watching, literally when we was waiting for you, there was this yeah. little kid. Yeah. I don't know, she must have been about six, okay, seven. Yeah. She was doing laps, laps. and laps, laps at a consistent pace. Yeah. When I was young, I didn't remember being tired, to be fair. Yeah. Like, I, could, I couldn't sleep run around pattern. Like that. Yeah. Sleep pattern. That's what I'm trying to mimic is a better sleep pattern. But these guys here have had Jessica Ennis okay. as their inspiration. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's why these places are filled up because I see her here like every other week. Mm. So they can still relate and be in touch with one of the greatest um, track athletes that there is that this country's produced. And I think it's important, man. Yeah. 100% stay connected. Like wherever you come from, it's important to stay connected. I was uh, having a conversation with someone, what, a few, what, last week? And you came up in the conversation. Yeesh. And then something about like, oh, you're, like, AJ's gone proper slim and that. 
Then I'm I see him walk in, I'm like, yeah. nah, man. That's what I'm he's saying. not slim. Like, he's not really slim and that. Still, but yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then she was like, oh, nah, but, oh, yeah, but, like, I liked AJ when he was big. That's what, that's it. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what it is? These girls just love this lactic acid oh, bro, flowing around all over the place. Acid, bro. Don't worry, you know what I mean? Bro. But it's still there. Lact- I'm ready to get lactic acid again. If that's what they love, that's what they get. <laughs> <laughs> hey, get me some creatine. <laughs> <laughs> but powerless. But um, nah, nah. Jordan is is that like, even my friend was saying he's like, right, you lost weight. Your head looks massive. I was like, what? Oh, see, yeah. <laughs> he's like, your head looks massive. He goes, you know what the problem is now? I said, what? He goes, you know when we used to go out. He goes, I used to feel like, you know when? Yeah. He goes, yeah. He says now, but it's boxing. That's of what it's for. Wait, when can't... he said that to you, hold on, wait. See when he said that to you, yeah. How did like? You know, like, I when, some, when someone says, everything. oh, yeah, like, wow, but you, like, you lost weight in that. You start looking like, am I ill? Yes. Am I looking <laughs> ill? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Am I not as intimidating anymore? Yeah. But it's for boxing. Of course. Do you know what I mean? And, but the main thing I wonder is, because I still feel big and heavy now, I'm like, how big was I before? It's not for, like, image-wise, but for boxing. How was I getting through 11 rounds, 10 rounds fighting carrying that excess weight that I obviously didn't need. So this is where you're at now, where it's like, okay, I'm gonna try this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm more consistent with my training. Um, even though I've been at a high level for a long time, um, I'm still learning on the job. Yeah. So I've had to learn about what works. And after my last loss, it gave me a real minute to reflect. Mm. And I changed up some other things as well, which has obviously resulted in a different body shape yeah. physically. Like my job's physical, so physically you can see the changes. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. Like, just like the year that you've had, yeah, because the line between winning and losing yeah. it can be very, very thin. Yeah, and you would have always known that. Yeah, but did you realize it was that thin? Well, yeah, because you know what it's like. The thing that motivates you to win is probably the fear of losing. That fear of losing is what drives me to train. So I always understood it. And, you know, I always look at like my greats and the people who I admire and stuff and whether they're motivational speaker talking about setbacks and failures, which previously didn't have no relevance to me because I'd never taken a loss as a professional. Mm. But they would all talk about how the setbacks make them what they are. And then I'd look at some of my greatest of of champions in the history of, of boxing. And I think, hang on a minute. So they've taken losses, but it always felt like it was such a catastrophic, uh, I can't even pronounce it. Yeah, catastrophic. Yeah, mm. situation if you took a loss as, a, mm. as, a, as an athlete and boom, it happened. And one thing I knew is that you just have to take it like a soldier and there's no complaining. In hindsight, there's always things that you could change. But at the time, you just have to take it like a man and congratulate the other person and move forward. And I feel like, for me, I feel like I took a loss for the heavyweight division because at the time, Wilder, who I was always in the, um, they'll mention in my name alongside, he had only taken a draw, he hadn't taken a loss. Mm. Fury, a draw, never a loss. Um, Anthony Joshua, clean record. Now I took a loss. So it was all eyes on Joshua again. How's he gonna deal with this? And I felt it was important for me to handle it like a true champion. In good times and adversity, handle it like a champion. And I feel that was the message I wanted to get across through the bad times is that you can still walk with your chin up and your back high. Do you know what I mean? You should never shy away from these type of situations. And we go again. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I thought that it'll be it'll be a big setback. But interestingly, I've had the biggest opportunity come out of this. You know, going to Saudi, creating history, another defining moment. Like take away everything that it stands for, but me, Anthony Joshua, is fighting for the heavyweight championship of the world. Mm. Take away the word rematch, the fact that I lost previously to this guy, I have a shot at the heavyweight championship of the world. So out of such a drastic and bad situation, flip side, there's a massive positive that I get to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world December 7th and let's rock and roll. And I've got it and I'm fighting a guy that I know I can beat, mm. providing I get my tactics right. So Well what happens when there's that saying in it like um, if it's broken, you don't need to fix it. And That's for so long, thought. you've never needed to fix anything. That's what I'm saying, bro. So what happens when, it's, when it breaks? Everything I've had in me has always been there. It just needed fine tuning. So everyone's like, oh, we're seeing a different Joshua. I'm like, you're not seeing a different Joshua. You're seeing what was already there, but just fine tuned. So in a way, as I said, through this big issue, 
that seems to the world that I'm not the same person and I'm taking a loss on invisible for me has came out the other side where the biggest of opportunities have presented themselves and it's given me a chance to really put my foot down and say look this is what I was talking about and this is what I need to do mm. and I've gone through this training camp so far in the best shape that I've ever been and mm. I know it's quite generic to say that but I'm quite a realist and I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it and I really mean that through the changes we made I feel like I'm in the best place I could be ahead of this fight bro I got a hundred and hundred and one things I want to bring up with you. So much talking points to yeah. bring up, but I know that we're really short for time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I, I really hope that um, at some point we can kind of connect again and have hundred percent. I'd love to. I'd love to. But also on top of that, I do want to say to you, bro, that I think, irrespective of anything, one thing that I don't like here yeah, mm -hmm. is that sometimes people can make it seem like a, a loss is a defining thing, and it's not a defining thing. And yeah, it happened. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? At some point, these things can happen in your life, innit? Mm -hmm. But I just speak for a lot of people when I say that, irrespective of all of that, we're proud of you. And Thank we just, you, you know what I mean? We've got your back. And it may very, it may feel Thank like, you. it may feel like there's a lot of people now, because of what has happened, all of a sudden are like, oh, well, I don't think Anthony yeah, can do this course. anymore. And we're just, that's gonna happen, innit? But you know what? Man name's back in you, Yeah, bro. trust me. Yeah, trust so me. So good luck and just, you know, whatever yeah, happens, we're happens. Here. We're not going and, anywhere. All right, then. And as you said, is that, you know, it's not that we're saying that you have to experience a loss to understand what it is. But if you do, stand strong. Mm. It doesn't define you. It's part of the journey. Cool. And I'm all about winning. I don't want no one to ever think about losing. So I don't want what we're talking about to even make sense to the winners. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? To the people who are winning, what we're talking about won't even make sense right. because... They've never experienced a loss, but I want them to stay on that track. But if it ever does happen and they feel a certain way and they may be depressed, fall back on this talk and understand what it means and know that it's not a defining moment. It's just part of the bigger picture and part of the journey and you can bounce back. Word. You know what I'm saying? JD in a duffel bag, Anthony Joshua, everyone. Thanks for listening, yeah? Woo! Let's see. <laughs>